scientists of earth and beyond from outer space to home where you're safe i welcome you my future kooks to our very first episode of the earth and environmental science series my name is miss Pittman, and i will be your earth central host for today's interactive joining me today is miss sanchez mr nash and mr gonzalez we are with the Teach Houston program at the university of houston and we are so very excited to go on this earthly journey with you all today so grab your spacesuit because we're headed to the center of Earth. The things you're about to learn today are going to be out of this world. Or should I say within this world? Prepare for departure because I'm beaming you over to the knowledgeable Mr. Nash, who's going to talk to you about density and how it relates to Earth. Thanks for that great introduction, Ms. Pittman. What I have here for y'all today is my glass of liquid layers. Why don't you pause for a second and think about how we got these layers. Well, it all has to do with a little thing called density. Density deals with how tightly packed matter is together. The more tightly packed the matter, the denser something is. So the most dense layer, this really hard to see rock, will be at the bottom, while the least dense layer, this cap will be at the top. This directly relates to how the Earth's layers ended up where they are. Back to you, Ms. Pittman. Thank you, Mr. Nash, for your dense insights. Now that we all have a tight grasp on density, I believe you guys are ready for the next venture of this planet Earth with Ms. Sanchez. But before we proceed, I do have a question for you all. Have you ever just thought about digging straight through Earth to see what's at its center? Come on, haven't we all? Well, with this next activity, you'll be able to model what truly lies beneath our feet within the depths of this earth. Thank you, Ms. Bittman. Hello, everyone. I am Ms. Sanchez. Now that you explore density with Mr. Nash, we'll investigate how this property determines the location of Earth's layers. We'll do this by building our very own model of Earth's layers using homemade Play-Doh. First, let's take a look at the ingredients we'll need. To make the Play-Doh, we'll use two cups of flour, half a cup of salt, and half a cup of warm water that we got directly from the faucet. We will be using red, green, yellow, and blue food coloring. But if you have different colors at home, it will work too. Additionally, I will be adding two tablespoons of cream of tartar, but this is optional. We will be using a long piece of dental floss. But if you don't have any, fishing line or sewing thread will work too. Also, we will need a ruler or measuring tape. But if you don't have any, you can use your thumb to measure, like this. Lastly, we will need paper, pencil, and markers. Now, scientists pre-plan. Before you build your model for Earth's layers, pause this video. Draw a sketch of what you predict your model will look like. This will help you plan better and work on your problem solving skills before you even begin. To make the Play-Doh, we'll mix two cups of flour, half a cup of salt, and two tablespoons of cream of tartar in a mixing bowl. To this dry mix, we'll add half a cup of warm water that we got directly from the faucet. Using our hands, we'll mix to achieve the texture that we're looking for. Once the Play-Doh isn't sticking to your fingers anymore, you'll know it's ready. Using your hands, separate your Play-Doh into two equal parts. You can also use a long piece of dental floss to do this. Put one half aside. Now, take the other half and separate it into three balls. Ball number one should be about two inches in diameter. Balls number two and three should be about three inches each. Use your ruler or measuring tape to measure the diameters of each ball. Now, Let's color it. For bowl number one, we'll color it red. For this, we will use six drops of red food coloring. Make sure you mix and knead it thoroughly to all the balls colored throughout. Use your hands to work the color in. We're going to color bowl number two orange. For this, we will use three drops of red food coloring and three drops of yellow food coloring. Mix all the color through, then roll into a ball and pull it aside. 
Lastly, we'll color ball number three green. For this, we'll use three drops of green food coloring. Make sure you squeeze and work all the color in. Once these portions are colored, put them aside and get the other half of the plate that hasn't been colored yet. For this half, we're gonna separate it into two small balls of about two inches in diameter each, and one larger ball of about three inches in diameter. First, take the larger ball, ball number four, and we're going to color it dark blue. For this, we're going to mix in six drops of blue food coloring. Mix it in and put it aside. Next, we're going to color ball number five light blue. For this, we're going to use three drops of blue food coloring. Make sure to squeeze all the color through. Lastly, we're going to color ball number six teal. For this, we'll mix three drops of blue food coloring and three drops of green food coloring. Make sure to mix all the color through. After adding all the coloring in, you should end up with three small balls. Number one, red, number five, light blue, and number six, teal. Two medium size, number two, orange, and number three, green. And one large ball, number four, blue. As we said earlier, scientists can identify three different layers on Earth based on their composition. We'll start by building a compositional model of Earth's layers. This means that we will model each layer based on what they're made of, grouping similar layers with similar colors. Let's begin with the innermost compositional layer, the core. For this, take the small red ball, roll it up, and place it in the center of your workspace. Now, take the orange ball. You see your fingers, press it on your surface and make it flat until its diameter is big enough to cover the small ball in the center. You'll notice that in my model, the core has warm colors. We'll discuss the specifics of each colors later. For our core, in our model with warm layers, we know it's made out of mostly metals, mainly nickel and iron. Moving on, we'll have our mantle. For this, we'll need ball number four, blue, five, light blue, and six, teal. Start by pressing the dark blue ball, number four, and laying it flat on your surface. Use your fingers to stretch it until its diameter. It's big enough to cover the dome you already created. Next, take ball number five, light blue, lay it flat using your fingers, and then cover the dome shape you created with the other layers. Lastly, take the teal, press it with your fingers, and then add it to the model. Now, we've added the mantle to our model. This middle layer, it's made out of iron, aluminum, calcium, sodium, potassium, oxygen, magnesium, and silicone, which form rocks. Lastly, we'll add a green color crust. Wherever you're watching this from, you're the closest to the crust. This is the outermost layer. Take the green ball, press it flat, add it to our model. This outermost layer, it's made out of cool rock, and it serves as a base to all the landforms we see on Earth's surface, like valleys, mountains, and even the Grand Canyon. How cool is that? I mean, come on, how DIY was that? Thank you, Ms. Sanchez, for deconstructing each layer for us. Remember, my fellow scientists, the compositional layers of Earth simply fall under three categories. Three categories, three categories, three categories. Oh, that's right, the crust, the mantle, and the core. Within these compositional layers, we can define them in terms of what they are made of. But guess what? There's one more way we can identify these layers. Let's visit Mr. Gonzalez and learn how we can identify these layers from a mechanical standpoint. Oh, hello scientists. I didn't see you there. As Ms. Pittman mentioned, we can also classify the layers of Earth based on their mechanical properties or what state of matter they exist as. If we take our model and split it in half with our floss, we can now see what experts refer to as a cross-section of the Earth's layers. Let's take this all the way back to the innermost layer again. This time we're looking at the smaller portion of our core from earlier. We can call this red sphere the inner core. Now let's think back to our density demo. Which material sank to the bottom of the glass and why? Right, the rock sank to the bottom of the glass because it was the most dense. 
Similarly, the inner core is the most dense of Earth's layers, so it also sinks to the bottom, or to the center of the Earth. It also has an extremely high temperature and pressure, making the metals of this layer completely solid. Moving on to the orange layer, we can call this the outer core. Because the inner core is so hot, it ends up melting the metals in the outer core, making this layer liquid. This is how we can distinguish between these two layers, even though they are made of the same elements. Now let's look at the layers that make up the mantle. This dark blue layer can be called the mesosphere. Earlier we said that the mantle was made of rock. Because the mesosphere is further away from the inner core, it is also a little bit cooler, so it is also mostly solid. Moving on to the next layer, this light blue portion is the asthenosphere. Although it is still solid, it exists in a fluid or gummy texture, similar to that of jello or marshmallows. The flexibility of this layer allows for the movement of tectonic plates, which is something we will be talking about next time. Our final mechanical layer is the lithosphere. If we're looking at our compositional model, we can say that the lithosphere is made up of the upper mantle, which is the teal portion, and the crust, which is the green portion. Unlike our gummy asthenosphere, the lithosphere is completely solid rock. This is because it is the furthest away from the inner core, so its components have had plenty of time to cool and harden into the surface we see today. Back to you, Ms. Pittman. Scientists, do you see the connection clear? Think about it. Remember the density demo with Mr. Nash? The mechanical layers that Mr. Gonzalez just introduced should make much more sense in terms of density. Hence, fill in the blank for me. The core is then the crust. That's correct. The core is more dense than the crust. This explains the layering we constructed in our models. Now back to you, Mr. Nash. Scientists, as we return to the Earth's crust, you'll have another opportunity to dig deeper into some of Earth's layers. This will give you a chance to explore a super interesting mechanism that occurs in the outer core and the mantle. Don't forget to check out our expert. He has some really cool gadgets to show you. Back to you, Ms. Pittman. Welcome back to the surface, everyone. I hope you all were paying very close attention to detail in each of the layers we traveled through today. Want to know why? Well, guess what? One of those layers actually holds our challenge of the day. If you weren't able to catch it, that's fine. Just rewind the video and make sure you're on the lookout. The Earth Central team is all very excited to see how each of you challenge your knowledge and get creative. While you're making your Earth model creation, make sure you snap a pic of it and share it with us on Facebook because we'll be looking out for all of your responses. In next week's interactive, we're actually going to share with you guys our very own Earth Central model. So until then, from a proud Coog to a future Coog, stay safe, stay curious, stay tuned. <laughs>